Hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is Colonel Stan Scrabbit. I'm with the Civil Air Patrol, and tonight we are going to talk to you about the Civil Air Patrol. And with me, I have Lieutenant Colonel Darren Ninnis. Darren, hello. Good evening, everybody. Thanks for joining us. So I am uh, right now hanging out in New York. Darren is hanging out in New Hampshire, and uh, through the uh, the power of technology, we're able to come in and tell you a little bit about the Civil Air Patrol. So we're going to get started on this right away. And without further ado, let me fire up my presentation. I'm going to share my screen. And Darren, if you can let me know that you see it, please. Sure thing, Stan. And don't forget, you can use the Q&A feature here in the Google Hangout, or you can also ask questions on uh, uh, Twitter, if you use the hashtag Civil Air Patrol or CAP Recruiting. All right. So tonight we're going to talk to you about the Civil Air Patrol, why you would consider this as a program, a volunteer program, uh, and join. A uh, couple things that I want to let you know about. You know, we told you that there's different ways of asking questions and we encourage you to ask questions you can do it through the the chat feature which uh we've talked about there's also a special q a and also on twitter uh we're following hashtags so if you're on this page you'll you'll see the the couple of hashtags uh at the bottom of your page i put them in earlier but you can also reach out to us and i am at ner recruiting and Darren is at NHQ Recruiting, and you can reach out to us there, and we'd be more than happy to answer your questions. So why are you at this presentation? You may have seen some invitations on the internet. I know I've been sending out quite a few, or you may have received an email uh, specifically say, encouraging you to come check out this presentation. And with that, you've probably heard about the Civil Air Patrol, but really not so sure about what it is and, you know, is it something that you want to be part of? When you join an organization, you're going to invest time, you're going to invest energy, and you just want to make sure if it's a right fit for you, right? You want to be really confident that this is a program that is going to fit your nature uh, and, and we want the same thing. We want to make sure that it's going to be a good fit. Um, otherwise, people have a tendency to just leave and are frustrated, and we certainly don't want that to happen. So let me tell you about the Civil Air Patrol. This is a program that I have personally been in since 1975. I started as a young adult in this program, and I have been in the program ever since in a variety of different states, in a variety of different uh, uh, positions, and it's been absolutely wonderful. Our Civil Air Patrol has really three core missions, and those missions are aerospace education, the cadet programs, and emergency services. And I'm going to take a moment and tell you a little bit about each one that way you're better informed when you go to visit your local Civil Air Patrol and they can continue that conversation. And that's what our hope is today is to let you know about this, what I consider an absolutely wonderful program. So first, aerospace education. So Civil Air Patrol is chartered by Congress and one of their core missions is to, to educate the public and its membership about aerospace. And this is, you know, everything above the land. It's, it's dealing with uh, aviation. It's dealing with space, what the importance is, why we should continue to invest in it, and how we can do this smartly. <clears throat> so Civil Air Patrol is a leader in educating the public in aerospace activities and they have been involved in this since 1941 as part of this core mission. So we're there to uh, continue to educate, to teach skills, right? So, so part of it is actually we're out there flying 
and also talk about attitudes, you know, because there's an investment into aerospace, for example, investing in NASA. Is it a smart thing to do? Why should we do this? And we certainly talk about those issues as part of our program. I'm going to talk about the cadets um, in, a, in a, the next section, but basically our cadets are, uh, are young adults who are 12 years old and older until basically, you know, 21 years old. That's, that's our cadet program. And one of the things that we do is, is help them progress through a curriculum focused on aerospace education. So in this curriculum, they learn about the principles of flight. They get to understand weather and navigation and space flight um, and our solar system and a variety of things dealing with aerospace education. And every time they advance through the program, they are taking tests regarding that curriculum. And as they become further into the program, the curriculum becomes more challenging, but it really sets them up with a great science background um, and, and a passion because it's hands-on that we can get them um, excited about this. You know, and as you can tell, they're sitting in a cockpit and uh, just big grins on their faces. On our adult side, we also encourage uh, our members to work through uh, aerospace education. And we have a couple different programs. One is the aerospace education officers where they learn how to um, basically develop activities and run the curriculum for our cadet members and also other adult members. And we also have what's called the Jaeger Award. And the Jaeger Award is we have a, a textbook for Civil Air Patrol. It is a college level textbook that has been used um, through high schools across the nation and also college courses have used this textbook. And we ask our senior members to work through this program. And in the end, they pass an examination and they earn the, the Yeager Award. But so it's one of the awards, but we're constantly encouraging our membership to be involved in aerospace education. We have an Aerospace Excellence Award program. And the Aerospace Excellence program is really based on these curric this curriculum that's based on hands-on activities. And so we get the members together and work through these various hands-on activities and they learn these principles that are applicable you know, to the various, um, the more the technical side, the academic side of the program. And so they get to work through those in hands-on activities. This particular activity that you see here is, is trying to simulate what happened on Apollo 13. That on Apollo 13, if you remember, they had, um, they had an explosion and they were going to, there was problems in transferring air. And so they had certain equipment on the capsule and they talked to ground control. And between the two of them, they managed to figure out a system that kept the, the crew alive and got them home safely. But the challenge was, is being able to do this without seeing each other and just doing it through verbal communications. So we're simulating this in this activity. In Civil Air Patrol's external program, they work with teachers all across the nation to introduce aviation and aerospace education into the classroom, which also includes orientation flights. And teachers, we have a, a teacher's orientation program that we get teachers up in the air, get them excited about the, the science of aviation, you know, through flying, so they can come back to their classroom and excite their, their students about that. Part of Civil Air Patrol's plan is they have, they support workshops all across the nation where teachers get together and learn about activities that they can use in the classroom 
uh, focusing on aerospace education. And they bring that into the classroom, but they have some um, workshops uh, supporting some national aviation uh, workshops that just get teachers excited about this program and some, some great conferences. Um, and, and Civil Air Patrol uh, helps to sponsor those and helps provide assistance, you know, in conjunction with the Air Force. Civil Air Patrol has a vast curricula that is applicable from kindergarten all the way through college. Um, they have uh, in the center of the screen where it's labeled one, two, three, four, five, six, those are the modules that our, our basic cadets work through. And they talk about those uh, different aspects. Up in the upper left hand corner is that uh, college level textbook that I had, had talked about where our more senior cadets work through it. But, and then down uh, in the lower left, you have the aerospace excellence program. Those are hands-on activities that we work through. Um, we have a robotics program, a rocket program, just lots of great material that meets national education standards. So as a teacher, if you wanted to use this material, you could map it up to your, um, to your curriculum because it does meet national standards uh, in education. So uh, great material and it comes as part of an aerospace education member, which teachers, you know, we encourage teachers to become aerospace education members, which I think is like $35 a year. All this material would come to you free. Uh, you cannot beat that. In Civil Air Patrol, we have a number of grants and uh, scholarships that are available to the membership. And a lot of these uh, scholarships and grants help pay for college, such as uh, at Embry-Riddle, which uh, helps pursue an aviation degree. Uh, but there's also other types of, of grants uh, available. And there's grants that apply to a teacher in the classroom where you can apply for a $250 grant through the Air Force Association to um, fund a project for your classroom and help offset the costs for that. Uh, and that's available to teachers as well as uh, aerospace education officers at the local unit. Civil Air Patrol has a wide uh, range of resources that are available to teachers and aerospace education officers um, through their website that you could go there and see what kind of materials are available and be able to um, tap into those those riches that you could use for your classroom. <clears throat> As I noted before that the CAP curriculum meets national standards, but also a lot of the material is, is basically STEM uh, capable. So dealing with the science and technology, engineering and math careers. And we really try to uh, move our membership forward that way and, and get them excited about the sciences and, and understand the math that's involved. And in Civil Air Patrol, there's quite a bit of math when you're planning out your flights, um, when you're trying to figure out how far your rocket went, lots of things um, that we are we are tapping into this these STEM careers, and I'll talk more about that as we go on. As I noted, these are you know the academic standards, uh, our textbooks that we work our our cadets through, but these are also available to educators to to use it to support your classes. Um, wonderful material and you can find them uh, based on the education level you're working at and there is a tie-in to the national standards. Lots of different programs that Civil Air Patrol is supporting. Uh, we have special STEM kits for robotics and RC aircraft, so remote controlled aircraft. We have uh, programs that do satellite tracking that you know you load it onto a computer and you can plot the different satellites and track them and and uh, weave that into your classroom civil air patrol is also involved in cyber patriot 
Cyber Patriot is uh, dealing with computer systems and trying to keep computer systems secure. And so they do it through an, uh, an annual com competition where teams get together and they are coached up on how to uh, secure a computer system and they compete with units all across the nation and even high school units get together. So this is uh, supporting both Civil Air Patrol and high schools in this Cyber Patriot competition. Uh, definitely, you know, cutting edge and, and looking at, at our future. Those scholarships, over $350,000 worth of academic and flight scholarships are, are offered. Um, and to be honest, a lot of that money uh, goes unchallenged. So there's, there's great opportunity to uh, tap into those monies and be able to advance you know, your program or have an opportunity to, to possibly you know, fly, um, you know, depending on what it is, at, at what age level you're working at. So that's our aerospace education program, a really exciting program doing lots of great things for our nation uh, as far as aerospace, helping teachers excel, uh, helping our membership, you know, become um, technology, you know, dealing with technology and sciences and just advancing. So, so we're very proud about that program. That's been, that's been a leader in the nation for a long time, it received many awards. Our second program is the cadet program or our second mission. And here is where we develop leaders uh, for the program. And, and I have to say, I've been with this program, like I said, from 1975. And I am entirely confident that if we take a young adult, get them at least halfway through this program, and, and for, for somebody in Civil Air Patrol, I'm talking really the Mitchell Award, which is when they be, go from, you know, a cadet sergeant, to moving into the cadet officer ranks, I am confident that they will serve our nation well, that they will go out and they can be counted on to be leaders. And I think Civil Air Patrol does this in a wonderful way. Through the program, Civil Air Patrol cadets have to go through 16 achievements one step at a time and, and each step they they go through a different promotion that they earn their first stripe and and they become cadet sergeants and finally become cadet officers and work through that but 16 different steps as they work through this program and they they learn respect they learn um an appreciation for this nation they they become very good young adults um, that I, I am definitely proud to serve with. So we educate cadets in four different areas, leadership, aerospace education, fitness, and character development. <clears throat> in leadership, they go through basically four phases. So they start out with no stripes, no experience, and they slowly learn to be great followers and learn a, a sense of self-discipline. And from that self-discipline, pretty soon they're starting to take on leadership responsibility where they're helping some other new cadets on how to um, tackle this program. As they stay in longer, they take on more responsibility where they may be responsible for a group of cadets. And then finally, you know, at, at an encampment, they're at the executive level where I've watched young adults, 17, 18, 19 years old, take charge and run what's called an encampment where there are 300 to 400 cadets there and they're responsible for getting them up and making sure they're fed and make sure they get to classes and and they set set up the whole program i you know i work at a a college and 
if if we had that same type of young adult at college, I, I think it would be an entirely different different atmosphere. And I like I said, I'm tremendously proud of what the cadet program does. I think it's a very powerful, um, well put together program. Part of uh, the Civil Air Patrol is we definitely want our cadets flying. So we get them, they have what are called orientation flights. They're given nine flights, sometimes in a glider, sometimes in a powered aircraft where they are put in control of the controls of the aircraft once they are safely at a safe altitude. And from that, they basically fly the aircraft under the tutelage of uh, you know a pilot, a trained pilot. They also are open to flight training scholarships where they could work their way to a private pilot's license. And I, I think it's absolutely cool that by the time somebody is 16, 17 years old that they have a private pilot's license, uh, a skill um, I honestly did not take advantage of and I wish I had. But this is available through the Civil Air Patrol program. We, we believe firmly that you cannot be a safe aviator and use drugs at the same time. And so if we, we are constantly challenging our cadets to think about their future, to think about what they want to be. And, and a lot of our cadets are aiming for the, the stars. But in order to do that, you know, uh, drugs and and alcohol abuse are not part of it, and so you know I, I think we drive this home pretty well that those are not compatible um, to have a safe and successful lifestyle. One of the things that the cadet needs to do before they earn the Mitchell Award or that transition into the cadet officer ranks is to complete an encampment and an encampment is a you know uh, a week long you know to about nine days uh event it's it's part camp you know so they're going they're going away but it's it's under kind of a military environment where they're given a, a taste of of what it is to live on a military base uh, get up real early in the morning, um, do physical fitness, uh, participate in, in all the different activities, and, you know, really learn teamwork as part of that. And it's challenging. It's really challenging, especially for young cadets who have never been away from home. Uh, it's a stressful environment, but it's manageable. And you know, one of the things I always tell parents when they get back is if they didn't know how to make a bed when they left, they certainly do now. And so uh, encampment's part of this activity. They work through um, various competencies at an encampment, learn about aviation. And part of learning that is actually we try to get orientation flights. So I was in Wyoming for a long time and we would have uh, the army come in and fly, you know, fly the cadets on the helicopters. In this last encampment, they had a C-130 aircraft come in and the cadets rode that. Uh, so that typically happens across the nation that we are trying to get the cadets up in the air, get them excited about flying and, and what the possibilities are. During an encampment, they learn about more about aerospace education. They get a better handle of the cadet program. Uh, the cadet program is a leadership laboratory. We allow them to go out and make mistakes. We allow them to, to be challenged, uh, but they're, it's done under supervision. It's done, you know, part of the mistake. I, I think people learn very well when they make mistakes um, and we put it into the right context to help them learn. And then also emergency services. So in this case, the teams are getting ready to go participate in navigation course uh, that was set up. 
Part of an encampment is also drill and ceremonies, learning to work as a team, learning to work with a, a, a group of people who you have just first met. And at the end of this, you're, you're a well-oiled machine that you can work together collectively. Also part of an encampment, uh, getting up early, as I said, physical fitness, but also you know, fun activities, playing volleyball and ultimate Frisbee and such, and character development, talking about these issues that are in our society, um, the challenges, anything from cyber bullying to, you know, just plain bullying or ethical issues, um, dealing with integrity and, and such like that, and also looking at creative thinking. Um, that they're faced with problems and, you know, seeing what kind of solutions they come up with. They will also explore, explore aviation career paths as, as part of this. <clears throat> Once you, uh, cadet is done with an encampment, then they have an opportunity in the future summers to participate in what we call national cadet special activities. But these are special aviation and technology uh, camps that we conduct during the summer all across the nation for a variety of different topics. And I'll tell you about a couple of them. So one of them is um, basically going to uh, a fighter base in Texas and going through the same training under actually supervision of many Air Force personnel, going through the same training that an Air Force fighter pilot would go through. Uh, it's a week long course, so naturally we can't do something that would take years, but it gives them a taste on different activities uh, from there. And they get to talk to the, the fighter pilots who are in training and get a better understanding. This young lady who is checking the fuel on the aircraft is uh, Heather Steed, Heather Gould at the time, she's newly married, and she was one of the cadets in Wyoming. Um, tremendously smart young lady, and she was at a ground school or a, a pilot school for Civil Air Patrol, where in 10 days she was able to solo in a Cessna 172 um, and basically, you know, it was working towards getting her private pilot's license. And that was an activity that we could do at much cheaper rate, um, you know, because of, of being part sponsored by Civil Air Patrol and, and the various skills uh, or various uh, help that we received from our volunteer members. We also have a glider school. So the difference between the powered school, at the powered school, you have to be 16 years old or older. At the glider school, you only have to be 14. So here we have cadets spending a, a week learning how to fly a glider and many of them uh, solo and you know start their, their advancement to their own private pilot's license. This is a pararescue course that Civil Air Patrol go uh, hang out with our elite combat search and rescue teams. And they learn all kinds of different skills from navigation to survival. And in this case, they're doing some rock climbing and rappelling, but other rescue operations that are used by our pararescue search, pararescue jumpers. Hawk Mountain, this was, as a cadet, this was one of the schools I went to and basically it's a search and rescue school and uh i i have to honestly say i spent 20 years in the air force and hawk mountain um was one of the most challenging schools that i went to but i think maybe because of the time i went to the school uh it was very challenging for me at that moment that that helped put everything else in perspective and made everything else easier because I was challenged at a young age in this wonderful search and rescue school. So 
Uh, that's one of the schools that held in Pennsylvania at Hawk Mountain. Uh, <clears throat> one of the one of the new schools that Civil Air Patrol has deals with learning to build and fly uh, remote controlled aircraft. And there, you know, if you if you listen to the news, we have folks, we have drones everywhere. Um, people are learning to fly drones. So this is definitely something that's cutting edge. Uh, Civil Air Patrol has already been involved in it for a long time. But also uh, the Air Force is doing, uh, the Air Force and other branches of the military are also doing more with un unmanned aircraft. And, uh, you know, I, I can't lie, Civil Air Patrol or uh, the Air Force would love to get a hold of Civil Air Patrol cadets uh, because of the experiences that they are learning. So, um, but it's one of those schools, it's a, it's a great school to go to. We also have uh, cadets participating in Color Guard and Honor Guard, and we have an Honor Guard Academy where they work with the best in the nation uh, on Honor Guard, which helps them develop a poise and confidence, um, attention to detail, uh, respect. Um, they, they, a lot of great qualities are built through this particular school. We have a space familiarization course where uh, Civil Air Patrol cadets go and they go to our various space centers where they see how satellites are tracked. In some cases, uh, the school is timed for the launch of, say, a space shuttle um, that cadets had an opportunity to, to see all the steps involved in getting well, not all of them, but uh, a number of steps involved in getting a space shuttle into the sky and then actually watching a launch. Um, that's happened in our past. So uh, they get to go see, you know, all the different things that are being tracked in space. Cadet Officer School. This is a challenging school where cadets go learn about leadership and ethics and, and how to be uh, good leaders dealing with problem solving and speaking and writing and uh, they have to give presentations but in this case they are working through problem X and so they don't know what the problem is but they have to figure out as a team how to work through this problem. Um, great school it's for um, our cadet officers so they they definitely had to be in the program for for a while already and this just brings them to the next level. Some of the results of this great program. Let me tell you about some of the results. Uh, we'll talk about the people here in a second, but first of all, a cadet in the Civil Air Patrol, if they get through halfway through the program, thus earning the Billy Mitchell Award, if they were to enter a branch of the military, they would go in with a higher pay grade, which means they would go in more money. So I, I affectionately call this the money award that to go in the Air Force, you go in as an, an E3, and we're talking a couple hundred dollars more a month uh, in the paycheck, and the other branches of the service will also pay at a higher grade. If you earn the SPOTS Award, which is the highest award in the Civil Air Patrol program for a cadet, and it has only been handed out since 1964, and I want to say about 1,700 cadets have earned this award. If you earn that award, because it is so challenging, that there is a 99.9% .9 chance of getting an appointment to a military academy. Not just the Air Force, but West Point, Annapolis, um, there is a significant chance. And that is what uh, the Air Force believes um, this award is, is definitely recognizing leaders in our program. Also at the Academy, that about 10% of each new class is made up of Civil Air Patrol cadets. So normally the Air Force Academy brings in a thousand new uh, cadets 
and you know, 10 percent, 100 of them would be from uh, Civil Air Patrol. Civil Air Patrol, um, the young lady I showed before who was getting fuel on the aircraft, she went through Air Force ROTC and there is a high number of Civil Air Patrol cadets um, that go through the Air Force ROTC program and they got into the program because of their exceptional um, record in Civil Air Patrol and their leadership potential was recognized and help them get into Air Force ROTC, which is a cost savings if you're going to school, if you can get an ROTC scholarship. I mentioned earlier, we have scholarships. So this is another thing that the, the cadets, once you earn uh, the Mitchell Award, you are then eligible to earn some of these scholarships uh, or apply to these scholarships to help offset college costs. So they are there. It's just a matter of applying for them. So I mentioned that Civil Air Patrol has a great group of cadets that they go off to do great things. Let, let's talk about a couple of them. First of all, Colonel Eric Bowe, he was, you know, he was, is an astronaut and uh, was on one of the, the latest sp shuttle missions. Um, he was a Civil Air Patrol cadet. Lieutenant Colonel Nickel Malakowski is the first Thunderbird pilot, and she also was a cadet and credits Civil Air Patrol for her love of aviation, and um, she believes that it helped her get to the level that she is. Major Shauna Rochelle Kimbrell, who's the first black female fighter pilot, she also credits Civil Air Patrol for putting her on the path of success. So um, hats off to these, these folks. Civil Air Patrol has a huge fleet of aircraft vehicles and equipment that we use for our mission. So, so, so far I've talked about our aerospace education mission, which we are out there trying to uh, work with our membership to learn about the, the power of aviation, the power of space flight, helping teachers learn that. We have our cadet program where we have a focus on working with young adults to turn them into great leaders for our nation. And now we are looking at the last of our core missions which is emergency services and how we serve our nation. And this is, this is really how we got our start in 1941 was our love of nation and our willingness to use aviation to support our nation. And so now let's talk about our emergency services program. So we have an air, a aircraft fleet, vehicle fleet and equipment fleet that is supporting this. So we fly a lot of different missions in support of the Air Force and our local communities. So let's talk about a, a few of those. So we fly 90% of all federal inland search and rescue missions directed by the Air Force. So what this means is if an airplane crashes or an airplane uh, doesn't arrive where it's supposed to, when it's supposed to, the Air Force gets involved and they call on Civil Air Patrol to go look for that, that missing aircraft. And we have air crews across the nation who are trained in order to go execute that mission and help find people. And we do quite well. We, we, we have all kinds of resources that we bring to bear, um, cell phone forensics, radar forensics. Um, we have a, a great group of people who are out there and dedicated to, to jump in at a moment's notice to go help find somebody that's in need. We also are involved in disaster relief where we are helping 
local emergency management agencies um, to sort out whatever disaster that hits our nation. This happens to be some flooding in Wyoming and our air crews were out there taking pictures of that uh, to get it back to emergency managers who could better uh, find ways to mitigate that problem. Today, as I'm speaking, there are, are terrible flooding going on in Louisiana. And you can bet that Civil Air Patrol will be called out to photograph that and get it in the hands of emergency managers so they can go in and provide services where they're needed as quick as possible. And we do this, um, we are paid by the taxpayer, but we are, we are doing it at such a low cost that it is a great benefit to the taxpayer uh, compared to other possibilities that exist. We also do missions for Homeland Security that we may be asked. You know, one example is when we had the Olympics in Utah, Civil Air Patrol was asked to go out and photograph so they could do daily comparisons to make sure that nothing changed and that put uh, folks in danger. Civil Air Patrol um, regularly flies in support of NASA before a mission launch to go and photograph uh, areas and do reconnaissance flights to make, thing, make sure things are secure. Um, part of our infrastructure, Civil Air Patrol will take photographs uh, to make sure that our infrastructure is safe and secure because we have things everywhere. And uh, one of the easiest ways uh, to be able to assure its security is through aviation. Humanitarian flights. Um, this happens uh, if you recognize the photos of Ground Zero um, during the devastating attacks on New York City. Uh, Civil Air, and if you remember correctly, all aviation was shut down. But Civil Air Patrol was the first non-military uh, flight over Ground Zero. They were asked to take pictures of it. But in addition, Civil Air Patrol helped bring in doctors and search dogs and and uh, blood and plasma that was all flown into that area. I, and we do this daily across the nation to help move people and move resources um, when there's times of trouble. Civil Air Patrol, also one of the, the programs that happened back in 1941 is, is Civil Air Patrol helped uh, the defense of the nation. And part of that back in 1941 is Civil Air Patrol helped to search for enemy submarines that were up and down the, the eastern seaboard in the Gulf of Mexico. But they also towed targets so the Army could practice uh, shooting at the targets. And they also participated in nighttime uh, spotlight drills that blinded our Civil Air Patrol pilots. Well, that hasn't changed too much. Now, Civil Air Patrol helps the Air Force practice their readiness to intercept um, aircraft that are going into restricted areas. And so Civil Air Patrol is often asked to be the target uh, for high high speed jets uh, to come swoop down on them and uh, help escort them out of restricted areas. So we practice our nation readiness and Civil Air Patrol helps with that. In our combat of drugs, Civil Air Patrol um, does, does flights to uh, locate uh, drugs on behalf of uh, requests from uh, the the police, and <clears throat> so it's one of one of the missions that we have out there. In order to get involved in our emergency services program, requires um, it requires training. We can't just simply have you get involved and and not validate the training. Um, so one of the things that we do is we make sure that you are properly trained. 
So our air crews consist of a pilot, observer, and a scanner. So we typically work with a three-man crew, and they are trained in everything from navigation to communication to flying the aircraft to search search procedures. And anyone in that's a member of Civil Air Patrol, as long as you can do it safely, can be part of an air crew. You know, even though you may not be a pilot. Um, we do ask that only pilots fly the aircraft, that that other members can be part of an air crew and, and have the excitement of flight and also do an important mission for our nation uh, by learning to do this. And so we welcome and encourage folks to become part of those crews. We also, um, everyone from our, our young cadets, our young adults to, you know, our able body uh, senior members are part uh, can be part of a ground team. So their crew may find it, but it's really hard for them to do anything. So we need people on the ground to be able to go uh, to wherever maybe a crash aircraft is. And so we train ground train ground teams to go help do search and rescue. And they may be part of a disaster relief mission where they're knocking on doors and helping to evacuate or handing out food and water and, you know, different aspects. But um, one of the one of the roles that we have is ground team leaders and ground team members. So we train folks to go out and, and be able to uh, sustain in a in a remote area for a long period of time and be able to um, prosecute the, the different uh, requests that we have to check out targets and such. And then we also have our incident command staff. So the incident command, uh, we, we work under the incident command system, the, the national incident management system, and we have folks that are trained as safety officers, planning section chiefs, incident commanders, and such, that those are the folks that help plan and organize the mission and, and basically let the air crews and the ground teams know where they have to go and what they need to do in order to best um, either save a life or um, help get information back to our customer to you know so they can do their mission and so we always need people who are willing to train in those areas to be able to do those important tasks for you know for our nation so a little more of civil air patrol program across the nation civil air patrol has a fleet of 550 aircraft that are available to our membership to go fly. Um, sometimes they're flown and directly in support of an Air Force mission or uh, a state mission. Uh, sometimes it's just taking the aircraft out, you know, for your own proficiency ride. Um, and an aircraft, once you are qualified, once you are checked out that you can fly the aircraft safely, um, you have an opportunity to go fly the aircraft. And we also let our cadet membership uh, fly these aircraft if they meet the same standards that we expect everyone uh, to fly the aircraft safely. So uh, nice, we have a nice fleet out there. As I mentioned before, 90% of inland search missions, but we save, you know, on average 78 lives annually. Um, Civil Air Patrol, you know, this is an important program that somebody, you know, puts their aircraft down in a remote location. One of the things that they can be assured of is Civil Air Patrol will be coming out to look for them. And, uh, you know, if, if they do everything that, you know, they're supposed to do and, you know, stay with the aircraft, we, we will find you. Um, we have a very good record of doing this. Part of our aviation mission, we've flown almost 100,000 hours annually. Uh, and that is flying our cadets, flying teachers, flying to support all these different missions. 
uh, flying because we love to fly. And, and that's a little bit about the Civil Air Patrol. How you can find more? Go civilairpatrol.com. And with that site, uh, you'll be able to learn more about the Civil Air Patrol. And there's also, uh, you can go and find possible Civil Air Patrol organizations in your area. So that is a little bit about Civil Air Patrol. Talked about our aerospace education mission. We talked about our cadet programs mission, and we talked about emergency services. Uh, I think it's one of the finest programs in the nation. Um, it, it has a, a wonderful track record in developing leaders and, and going out and supporting um, our education and our, you know, striving to be a better country. And this is a great program. And it started with a love of country. And so I'm proud to be part of it, and I encourage you to go check out more at your local units. And with that, I will come back. So, Darren, am I back or not yet? You are back, sir. Very good. Okay. Do we have any questions? Uh, we have had no questions. I'm checking out the Q&A and our uh, page, and I'm also uh, looking at Twitter fall, and I don't see any questions at the moment. Very good. Okay. Well, um, any, any words that you want to share before we sign off? Well, like I spoke to some parents tonight at my meeting uh, where I had 21 new cadets show up tonight. Um, you know, I've been in Civil Air Patrol 35 years, started as a cadet when I was 14 years old. And this is a great program, and I've loved it my entire life, really. And I, I think it's really a, it's a great opportunity for young people to, to find out what they want to do or don't want to do and, and really uh, have a good experience. Very good. Okay, well, if there's no questions, once again, I really encourage you to come out and check out the Civil Air Patrol. Go civilairpatrol.com. And with that, Colonel Ninnis and I wish you a wonderful evening. And thank you if you did come out and visit us. Um, thanks for checking out the Civil Air Patrol. Have a good night. <laughs>